Last year, Alabama and Penn State went to the wire. The snap is hot. The spot is hot. And now the Lions want revenge in their final game with the Tide. And Penn State is coming off four straight wins. But Alabama is sky high after an emotional win last week at Tennessee. It's a beautiful college football Saturday in Tuscaloosa for today's meeting between two teams on a roll. Penn State has won four in a row and Alabama has won three straight. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. We're delighted to have you with us on ESPN for the final meeting in a decade-long series of games between these two longtime rivals. Alabama has had the upper hand lately. The Crimson Tide has won three in a row against Penn State. As always, it's a pleasure to be working with the coach, Mike Gottfried. What is the key, Mike, to today's game? Well, Sean, I think Alabama's coming off a big win, and uh, whether they have a letdown or not, we'll find out right away whether they're flat or not. Also, both teams are very good against the run. Penn State has only given up 80 yards rushing per game. Alabama, on the other hand, has only given up 99. One of these two teams has to get the running game going. Whichever team does will be successful. And lastly, when you get into the red zone area, the plus 35 area and the goal line offense, both these two teams are very strong. Of all the teams I coached against, Penn State is very good in that area. Whichever team scores touchdowns in that area when they get there instead of the field goal will win this football game. And down on the sidelines, we're joined by our colleague, Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. Interesting coaching matchup in today's game. Gene Stallings, the rookie coach for Alabama, and the third coach in an effort to replace the great Bear Bryant, who retired in 1982. On the other side of the field, well, the all-time winningest active coach in Division I, Joe Papaterno of Penn State. The old master and the rookie. It should be a great one. Whoever pulls the right strings comes out a winner. Back to you. Here come the Nittany Lions of Penn State. They opened the season with two losses. They've now won four in a row. And the Crimson Tide of Alabama. After an 0-3 start, the Tide back at 500 at 3-3 and, and looking forward to a bowl game. ESPN's presentation of CFA football, Penn State versus Alabama, is brought to you by Apple Computer and the new, more affordable line of Macintosh computers. By Truck Guard from Shell. Think any oil will take care of your truck? Think again. And by New West. Skin scent for him, created by Aramis. It's homecoming weekend in Tuscaloosa. We'll have the opening kickoff between Penn State and Alabama in golf. Of today's game between Penn State and Alabama. First, a check of the action involving top ten teams today. Number one, Virginia Idol. Auburn in a struggle at Starkville, leading Mississippi by a touchdown. Notre Dame plays later tonight on ESPN at Pittsburgh. Nebraska now rolling over Iowa State, and Illinois comfortably leads Wisconsin. Number six, Houston, was behind Arkansas early. Now it's a route in favor of Houston. Washington is shutting out California. Miami big over Texas Tech. BYU struggling but leading New Mexico. And Colorado leads Oklahoma by one in the second half of that football game. Penn State won the toss and deferred. Alabama elected to take the football. Craig Fayak, a freshman, will kick off for the Nittany Lions. Back deep for Alabama, number 28, Robert Jones, a junior from Birmingham. And we're underway. Jones from the sixth. Good return to the 30-yard line. A 24-yard return for Robert Jones. Here's the Sears diehard starting lineup for the Crimson Tide of Alabama on offense, led by senior quarterback Gary Hollingsworth. The running backs, the tailback Derek Lassick, the fullback Kevin Turner. The wide receivers, Lamond Russell, the converted tight end, and Donnie Finkley. Steve Buskey playing with a sprained shoulder as the tight end. Roger Schultz, the center. The guards, Chris Robinette and Trent Patterson. And the tackles, Matt Hammond and Terrell Chapman. Chapman goes at 301 pounds. Flag down on the return. Uh, Penn State started too soon on the kickoff, so they're, they're discussing the penalty right now with uh, Hollingsworth, whether to accept it or not. Enforcement by the ticking team is declined. We have a first down. Joe Shirk is the referee today, the officials from the Collegiate Independent Football Officials Association. Well, they're Eastern officials. They, uh, Penn State's officials win when Penn State comes to Alabama, and when Alabama played at Penn State last year, it was all SEC officials. 
The officials still talking the situation over, and Gary Hollingsworth is waiting patiently. John Alabama won the toss. They deferred. A lot of times coaches want to defer the choice so that they can make the choice in the second half. And it will be Penn State's choice in the second half. On first down, Derek Lassett. Tripped up by Mark D'Onofrio after a gain of two to the 31. The Nittany Lions of Penn State on defense. The three-man front, the tackles Frank Gianetti and Lupin Fadi. The nose tackle, Jim Dieter. An excellent core of linebackers, as always at linebacker U. D'Onofrio and Goganis on the inside. On the outside, it's Rich McKenzie and Reggie Gibbons. The cornerbacks, Leonard Humphreys and Greg Fusetti. The safeties, Willie Thomas and Darren Perry. Officially a gain of three for Lassick on first down. Second and seven, Alabama. Delay to Kevin Turner, and he's thrown for a loss. Greg Fusetti up from his cornerback position to lead the tacklers. Also off the bottom of the pile, number 54, Lou Benfati. This is a down last week where Alabama used the shovel draw against Tennessee quite effectively. Alabama is a, is a fine running football team. Where they've had their troubles is on third down. Third and ten or more situations are two out of 27. Not a good percentage and not able to keep the sticks moving. And that's their situation at the moment. Third down and 11 from their own 28. The Tide taking a lot of time in the huddle. And finally, Hollingsworth asks for a timeout. <laughs> Just underway in Tuscaloosa, and we'll be right back. Presentation of CFA football, Penn State versus Alabama, is brought to you by Dodge. Well, that's what I talked about in the open, about being flat. It's easy for a player and a coach to put the game behind you, but the fans constantly is uh, telling the player all week that he did a great job in Tennessee. Can't get it over with. Lorenzo Cole, the motion man, on third and 11. Hollingsworth intercepted. Darren Perry. Taken down by Lorenzo Cole at the 24-yard line. Darren Perry, the senior from Chesapeake, Virginia, with his third interception of the year. On the replay, Gary Hollingsworth off the shotgun, which negates the rush a little bit. Goes back, he's forced to move a little bit, throws the football. Darren Perry just breaks right in front of the receiver. Kevin Lee makes the interception. Again, Alabama has handled adversity well because they lost three games and then they won three. Can they handle prosperity? And they're off to a bad start. Perry had an interception last year against Alabama. This pickoff, the fifth of his career from the 29, first and 10 for Tony Saka. He is nearly intercepted. Through the hands of his intended receiver, Al Golden, and Ephraim Thomas could not hold on for Alabama. The Sears diehard starting lineup for Penn State on offense. You just saw the junior quarterback, Tony Saka. The fullback is Sam Gash. The tailback, Leroy Thompson, playing with turf toe. The wideouts, David Daniels and Terry Smith. The starting tight end is Al Golden. Rob Ludicky is the center. The guards, Brzezencek and Huntington. The tackles, McCartan and Duffy. Second and 10 from the 29 of Alabama. No score early in the first quarter. Thompson dropped for a loss. George Thornton, number 94. The Alabama defense, like Penn State, it's a three-man defensive front. Thornton, who just made the play, and Holbrook's the ends. The nose guard, Robert Stewart. On the inside, John Sullins and Derek Oden. The outside linebackers, Steve Webb and Spencer Hammond. And in the secondary, the corners, George Teague and Ephraim Thomas. The safety, Stacey Harrison and Mark McMillan. Alabama's in a dime defense right now. Six defensive backs. This is what they did so well against Tennessee last week. They were able to force them into throwing situations. Penn State's a little different offense in Tennessee than they played last week. Saka with plenty of time. Dumps it off. Caught by Thompson. He's close to a first down. Appears to have it at the 17-yard line. Here's Tim Brando. An amazing story in the SEC. And a couple of close calls against lightly regarded opponents. Perhaps what you were talking about relative to this game, a letdown for Auburn after their big win over Florida State last week. Saka on the money again. 
pickup of seven yards on first down for Joe Paterno. Penn State's opening it up a little bit more. As I watched their films the other day, you, you can see where Tony Sack is becoming more of a polished quarterback. Probably reminds Penn State fans of Todd Blackledge of years past, but he's a very good, solid quarterback throwing the football, but where he also is dangerous is running it, Sean. Now time called. And apparently there's a problem with the play clock. 11.44 left in a scoreless first quarter. The first down pickup was six yards on the pass from Saka to Al Golden. Watch Sam Gass, Gash on this particular play, the fullback. Outstanding fullback. Saka's pass knocked down. Third and four upcoming for Penn State. Well, when you're 6'5", as Tony Sack is, you have a good view in the drop-back passing game. He goes back, he sets up, he's going to throw a corner route right here, and as he lets go of the ball, you see the defensive lineman, George Thornton, raise his hands up and able to get a piece of it. Penn State has been excellent following turnovers by the opposition. Trying to capitalize on the interception by Darren Perry. Thompson thrown for a loss back to the 18-yard line. John Sullins, the inside linebacker, made the play for Alabama. Alabama brought John Sullins on a blitz. The right defensive call because there was no one leading the blocking. Anytime you go to a one-back set, you don't have a lead blocker on the linebacker. And they caught Penn State in a one-back set, brought the linebacker, made the play, stopped him from, uh, from yardage. Craig Fayak, a try of 34 yards. And it's good. And Penn State is on the board first as Fayak connects from 34, and it's 3-0 Nittany Lions. Well, both teams, as I said earlier, they are going to have to be good in the red zone. As you look at the football field here in the team direction, as a coach calling plays, when the ball's on your own 15-yard line backed up, it's a backed-up zone. You get very cautious of how you want to call plays there. You need to get a first down. The next area is the freewheeling zone, where you run your entire offense, and you're able to do all the things you want to do. You get into the next area, it's the red zone, where I said it before, Penn State is excellent in this area, and so is Alabama. You need to, when you get to this area, you expect a lot of blitzes, just like you saw Alabama blitz Sullins there. You need to be able to throw crossing routes. Then you get down to the goal line area, which is a five yard area both teams are very strong there you need to punch it in for the score as coaches there's five areas that determine what you're going to play call first of all is field position just like i talked about the zones backed up freewheeling and so forth down in distance down in distance of what you need to get hash marks on the college game is very important your strength and the opponent's strengths are the reasons you decide what plays you're going to call ax kick fielded by jones again at the six He's down at the 24. Here's Tim. Sean, after college, we'll be in Lincoln. Be a great ball game, as Tim said. There's a lot of luck on every Saturday afternoon's football game. You just need to have some. Auburn's had their share, and so's Colorado here in this ball game. Hollingsworth, complete. Lamond Russell, voted the tight end of the decade of the 80s by Bama Magazine because of injuries. He's now a wideout, and he's now caught a pass in 24 consecutive games. Dick Anderson, formerly the head coach at Rutgers, talking things over with the Penn State offense. Their scoring drive, 12 yards on seven plays. Fayak, now seven for 11 in field goals with his 34-yarder. It's important to get touchdowns when you get in this area, especially in this type ball game, which is, should be a tight football game defensively. Turner bounces off a tackle and picks up the first down. Penn State's front, they, they, they're playing a 50 defense, but they shade it. They'll move the nose guard to one side of the center, but the down four linemen are constantly working up the football field and creating tackles and seams for the linebackers to make play. 
draws are good against the Penn State defense. Uh, screen passes, uh, tight end over the middle type of plays. But Penn State's an excellent defense. Uh, they do such a good job, and they run well. This is a defense that may be comparable to their 86 defense. First and 10, Alabama. Chris Anderson, a true freshman from Huntsville, Alabama, out near the 40 for a pickup of about five on first down. When you look at both these teams statistically, rushing defense-wise, Penn State has had 210 attempts against them. 482 yards, only 80.3 yards per game. If you look at all these teams, Washington, Clemson, Penn State, San Jose, Nebraska, they're all winning. And here's the rest of the top 10, TCU, Florida, Miami, Auburn, Alabama. If you can stop your opponent from running the football, your chances of winning are pretty good. The combined record of those teams, 51, 14, and 2. The team that runs the ball the best today will win this football game. Pass complete. Anderson out of the backfield. His first catch of the day and fifth of the year. He's a speedster. Runs a 4-4-40. And in high school, he ran 100 meters in 10.5 seconds. Again, Gary Hollingsworth's going back. He's going to dump the ball to Chris Anderson. With all his receivers hurt, Lamont Russell's his best receiver. And then the second best possibility for him to dump the football would be to his running backs, especially Chris Anderson. He lost some key players by injuries, and it's really hurt this football team. On first and ten, Anderson. Couldn't get away from the pile. A loss of one back to the 46. You mentioned the injuries, and certainly they have been devastating to Alabama. Saran Stacy, who looked to get the ball between 28 and 32 times a game, according to Coach Gene Stallings. He's gone for the year with a knee injury, as are receivers Craig Sanderson and Prince Wembley. So not only do you have these three great weapons, but now Gary Hollingsworth has to adjust to the new cast of characters around him. Well, those are the producers. When you take Saran Stacy out of the ball game, he's a thousand yard rusher. It's just hard to replace him. Delayed a Turner on second and 11. He's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Tripped up by Rich McKenzie, the outside linebacker. Number 99. The tide has indeed been on a roll lately. Talk, talk to a lot of coaches in the East. They feel like Rich McKenzie's the next great player at Penn State, the next Shane Conlon type of player. Uh, watch Rich McKenzie here. Take on the block, on inside on the offensive tackle, Chapman. He's pulled down and still makes the play. There's just no place for the running back to cut right there. He took the cutting lanes away from him. Outstanding a player. sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Here's where Alabama's had their troubles. Third and long. Hollingsworth, man open, but the throw is too high for Donnie Finkley. And Alabama will punch. You just don't want to get in those situations. Gene Stallings just wants his team constantly to have short yardage situations in third down. You, they're not good in third and long, and I re feel the reason they're not good is because they lost Stacy and lost their two good receivers. Tank Williamson took over the starting punting job last week when Stan Moss shanked his first two against Tennessee. This is a good punt. Terry Smith from his own nine. He's collared at the 23. A 45-yard punt, a 13-yard return. Penn State gets the ball back, leading 3 to nothing. Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Penn State leads 3 to nothing on a 34-yard field goal by Craig Fayak, following an interception by Darren Perry. Then the Lions have the football back first and 10 at their own 23. Well, they're heavy unbalanced to the right side. Thompson fumbles. Still free. The Tide players think they have recovered the football, and they have. One thing you teach your players in that situation, always point like you got the football. You never know when two will come up together and you'll get an official's attention. Went to an unbalanced line to give the ball to Leroy Thompson. I don't know if he got the handoff. Leroy Thompson didn't play last week, and all of a sudden you put him in the ball game, and it takes a few plays to get set here. Just didn't get the handoff. A lot of things happen under that pile. Players pull at the ball and uh, try to pull it away from the opposing team. But I don't believe Leroy Thomas had the pocket made like he should. 
Thompson was a question mark until the pregame workouts. Joe Paterno wanted to see how he was running with that turf toe. Chris Anderson dropped behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of one. Alabama trailing three to nothing with the football deep in Penn State territory. Red zone area. Here's where Penn State is tough. Haven't coached against them the last four years. They're very difficult in this area because they blitz a lot in this area. They're constantly working up the field, and you run out of territory. Wouldn't be surprised Alabama tries that shovel draw they had so much success with last week. Second down and 11 with 624 left in the first quarter. Anderson tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Leonard Humphreys. Down on the sideline, here's Kevin. It is too much to ask of one man to replace both Coach Bryant and Joe Paterno <laughs> in a lifetime. Joe has a five-year contract, and so do I. Okay, thank you. Back upstairs here. Thank you. Third and 12 situation again for Alabama. Percentages are very low on it. Penn, Penn State again defensively very strong in that area. Did a good job holding them back. Now, field goal attempt by Alabama. Hollingsworth and Stallings talk things over. Gene sends the man who has been his offense for the last two weeks on the field, Philip Doyle. The last nine scores for Alabama have been field goals. Doyle trying from 43 yards to tie the game. And a rare miss by Philip Doyle, the hero of last week's victory over Tennessee with his field goal on the game's final play. That's just his third miss this year. He's now 16 of 19. Penn State's very fortunate. Dodged a bullet right there early in the ball game. Leroy Thompson's fumble. The difference to this point, Penn State capitalized on the Alabama turnover. At 8 p.m. Eastern tonight, Notre Dame's Regeeb Ismail leads the Fighting Irish against Swerven Kervin Richards and the Pitt Panthers. 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Notre Dame ranked number three and right back in the national championship picture with that big win over Miami last week. Pittsburgh a struggling team. I look for Penn State to work gash a little bit more here in this particular series. That and play action passes where they get Tony Sack and moving around a little bit. From the 25, first and 10 Penn State. Gash, the fullback. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. One thing both these teams want to establish early, you don't want to get in second and third and long situations. So in first down, you'd like to be able to pick up four yards. You see the Alabama defense move into a gap right here with the nose man, Byron Holbrooks. And again, penetration on the offensive line. When you allow Alabama to get you in second and 10, now they'll play with the extra defensive backs on you and put heavy coverage. Second and 10. Less than five minutes to play in the first quarter. It's 3 0 Penn State. Saka. Complete pass over the middle to the tight end, Rick Sales. He's the backup tight end, a sophomore from McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Ricky Sales is a good athlete. He's coming into his own in the last couple weeks. You see the drop back pass. Tony Saka is going to look off right here like it's a screen to the right and come back on the delay to Rick Sales. Again, once, once you look off in that situation, you draw the linebackers in that direction and you open up the middle. Now the extra DB, DBs are in for Alabama. It's a good rundown for Penn State right here. On third and five. Draw to Thompson. Stop short of the first down. Ephraim Thomas had the first hit on Thompson. I think Penn State coaches felt the same way. They saw the extra defensive backs come in. Nine men, 4-1 uh, front with the six defensive backs and felt they could run the football. Field position game. Penn State will play it every time. They'll play it very close to the vest, let their defense play. Doug Helkowski has had problems in the past with punts being blocked. He's had two blocked this year and nine blocked in his career. Alabama came after him with 10 men. He got it away. Anderson from the 22. And down at the 26. Penn State three, Alabama nothing. We'll have more on ESPN. Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Penn State leads three to nothing with three and a half minutes left in the first quarter. 
Joe Paterno. A living legend in the game of college football with 224 career wins. Alabama first and 10 from its own 26. Pass complete to the tight end, Derek Warren. He's a sophomore from Pensacola, Florida. Stopped short of a first down at the 33. When you talk about a living legend, that is certainly legendary company for Joe Paterno. Of coaches with more than 200 wins lifetime, Joe Paterno has the best winning percentage. Well, I coached against both the top two. I brought a team of Cincinnati players in here to play Bear Bryant for his last homecoming where he won 48 straight. Needless to say, when I left, he won his 49th straight. <laughs> Hollingsworth runs out of time and goes down. Down in the arms of Tioka Jackson, a sophomore from Forestville, Maryland, who's appearing in just his fourth game of the year. He now has two and a half sacks. And the pass protection broke down a little bit too soon for Gary Hollingsworth. Just didn't have time to, to find the receiver that he was looking for in this particular route. You see him drop back. See a defensive lineman from Penn State working the pocket and coming inside. And again, you just, as a quarterback, Gary Hollingsworth has to make up his mind whether to throw the football or take off. Third and six from the 30. Hollingsworth can run for the first down. This is the type of play that drives a defensive coach crazy. You make a great call, you're in man coverage, you're coming with outside pressure on Gary Hollingsworth. You should be able to down him. Gary Hollingsworth gets out from pressure of Rich McKenzie, and then there's no one there because all the defenders are playing man coverage. So somebody has to get off his man to come up and make the play on Gary Hollingsworth. Derek Lassick on first down. Picked up a yard and then was driven back by three or four Penn State defenders, including Tioga Jackson. As we mentioned, when Jackson made the sack a moment ago, he's a sophomore, but at Penn State, they list all of their football players by their academic standing in the university. Several of the players have a different standing as far as football eligibility is concerned. Tioga Jackson, as far as football goes, is a red shirt freshman. He did not play last year. He has freshman eligibility. Second down, wide open, Turner juggled it but held on to it and is close to the first down out of the 48-yard line. Turner, a very sure-handed receiver, usually out of the backfield. Kevin Turner slips out to the right side here. The tight end's running a little route that may pick off the linebacker. Gary Hollingsworth again under pressure. It's a good catch by Kevin Turner. Was able to control it on the first pop and then brought it in on the second one for the first down. Both these teams are going to be very difficult to run. Somebody's going to have to make something go in the passing game. Turner set an Alabama record last year for receptions by a running back with 48. Martin Houston, reserve fullback. He's a sophomore from center Alabama. He crossed midfield, and he'll be spotted down at the 45 of Penn State. Gene Stallings in the tide on the move in the final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Walker Three and three Stallings record in his first year at Alabama. The rest of those numbers you saw involve his seven seasons as head coach at Texas A&M. Hollingsworth, contact but no flag. Anderson, the intended receiver, and the fans wanted a flag on Keith Goganis. Gary Hollingsworth wanted a penalty flag as well. Well, I think everybody in this stadium, Brian Denny Stadium, saw pass interference except the referee in that particular. Well, he just ran into it. Watch Gary Hollingsworth go back, set up for the throw. Keith Goganis is in coverage right here. The ball not quite there yet, and you see Keith Goganis running right through the receiver. Third down and four on the final play of the first quarter with Penn State leading three to nothing. Boy, did that look like holding as Jackson was taken down. 
he managed to connect with Hollingsworth, and Hollingsworth thought that one of the Penn State defenders connected early with his receiver. Well, I think they offset each other. There's a hold, and then there's another pass interference. The umpire, that's two plays for him in that particular situation that he needs to watch for. Fans are booing, but of course, uh, the ball's going to be punted away. Gene Stallings more than a little bit upset as the first quarter ends with Penn State leading 3 to nothing. Controversial sequence of plays for the Tide. Now Alabama is forced to punt from the Penn State 45. Williamson's second kick of the afternoon and a fair catch made by Tyson Thomas. First and 10 Penn State from the 12. A 33 yard punt and no return. Perhaps the lack of flags even down on this play. First watch number 97, Tioka Jackson, get tackled down to the ground by Chris Robinette. No call there. And this is even a more glaring non call. D'Onofrio shoves the intended receiver, Martin Houston, to the ground. The umpire was looking at them both. But Ron Abdo chose not to throw a flag on either play. Unbalanced line to the right, Sean. Now they're motioning out of it. Back to it. Opening seconds of the second quarter, 3-0 Penn State. Thompson untouched into the secondary and out of bounds with a first down at the 24, a pickup of 12 for Leroy Thompson. They went to an unbalanced formation to try to gain an edge where you have one blocker per defensive man. So everybody's covered, and your fullback then can lead up the field. Watch Sam Gash on this replay. Here's a toss sweep. He's going up inside to block the linebacker, John Sullins. He gets him down. A good cut by Leroy Thompson on the outside to pick up good yardage. Saka through the hands of Thompson. He was open over the middle but could not hang on. Leroy Thompson, as I mentioned earlier, did not play last week and probably only practiced toward the end of the week. And his time, he's off a little bit right now. Early in the ball game, he fumbled something because he didn't have the right uh, uh, handoff. And now here in the passing situation, the ball's right to him and just takes his eye off a little bit. A little bit hard throw by Saka, but again, give Leroy Thompson some time and he'll be right back in the flow of things in this ball game. As you saw, he's a communications major. He wants to be a sportscaster when his football days are over. Here's Thompson again. He probably wishes he was in the broadcast booth right now. He took a shot at the 25-yard line after a gain of one. Six rushes and 22 yards for Leroy Thompson. Now watch the alignment of Alabama on this particular play coming up. They'll be in a 4-1 front with six defensive backs in the ball game. See all the defensive backs right here? Now they'll all either be manned up or playing in a heavy zone in this situation. they got three men rushing, four men rushing, one linebacker. Everybody else in that field is a defensive back. On third and nine. Saka going deep. Thompson behind the defense, but it was over his head. Saka saw Thompson moving behind George Teague in the secondary of Alabama, but the pass was a little bit long. Here's, a, here's what Tony Saka sees. He sees a, a field full of, of uh, defensive backs. There aren't any zones to throw. He has three receivers in this route, and look at the coverage. How many defensive backs? Thompson does get open for a second, but again, it's a very low percentage situation to be in when you're in third and 12 and thrown against all those defensive backs. Second punt for Doug Helkowski, the senior from Ruffsdale, Pennsylvania. Anderson started at his own 26. He's down at his own 35. Penn State three, Alabama nothing. We're in the second quarter. Quarter. On first down, Robert Jones moved away from Goganis and picked up a couple of yards. Down to the sideline, Kevin Conley to wrap with Saran. Stacy. Thank you, Sean. Saran Stacy, great running back from Alabama. Saran, first of all, total knee construction. How's it feel? Uh, right now, it feels good. Uh, you know, considering it's only six weeks, uh, my rehab is already started, and it's coming along fast. All right, you have an option of coming back, or you could turn pro after this year. What are you thinking? I'm thinking 
I'm just going to just last week, you want to say something to the family? Yes, I, I want to send my uh, regards to the Mason family out in Wichita, Kansas. I understand that, you know, what happened with Mike, and I uh, understand the funeral arrangements were today, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but I just want to know all of you are in my prayers. All right, sir, and thanks. Mike Mason killed in an automobile accident just last week. Thanks. Back upstairs to you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Second down pass incomplete. Third and eight for the Crimson Tide. Fran Station should stay in school. Come back and play and uh, get his leg ready and go on with his education and come back and play for the University of Alabama next year. Hollingsworth. Caught. First down, Alabama. Lamont Russell, the catch at midfield. Thirteen yard gain and they said it took Russell a while to adjust from moving to tight end to wide up, but he looks more comfortable there today. Watch Lamont Russell. He's going right to the sticks, 13 yards. He's going to curl. They had four receivers in this particular play. Covered very well by Darren Perry, just made the play. They flexed him out about five yards, and what that play is called is an all hook at the sticks. You go as far as the sticks. If they're six yards, you go seven. If they're 13, you go 14. Pick up the first down. He was first team all SEC and second team all American last year. Jones managed to elude a couple of tacklers and did well to pick up a yard, perhaps two to the 48 of Penn State. And the whistle stops the play for an injured player. One of the Nittany Lions is down. At this point in the ball game, Alabama's rushed for 20 yards. Penn State has rushed for 22. Real estate is very difficult to get on the ground. It's a typical Penn State football game as it starts because Penn State's letting them move a little bit, but when they get in that red zone, shut them off. Two of the top ten rushing defenses in the country, and that has been a big part of the story here. Three to nothing. The moon will be arriving earlier in the coming days. Don't forget to turn your clocks back one hour tonight. The ITT Hartford student athlete of the game is Penn State safety Willie Thomas. He's a senior from Coral Springs, Florida, who carries a 3.0 grade point average while majoring in finance. Congratulations to Willie Thomas, today's ITT Hartford student athlete of the game. Second and eight for Alabama. Wide open Russell. He stopped short of a first down by about a yard at the 41, taken down by Leonard Humphreys, the junior quarterback from Akron, Ohio. You can see that you can see that Alabama's unit has to throw to Russell. He's their key receiver. This is just a play action fake of the sprint draw to the left. Gary Hollingsworth comes up. Penn State does a nice job defending this. Lamont Russell comes open, makes the catch on a low pass, and then Leonard Humphreys lowers the boom on him to make it a third and short situation. Three catches today for Russell, now 99 for his career. Third down one. First down, Alabama. Robert Jones picked it up. Here's Tim. One of the glasses. Right, he has to pick it up a little bit to get on his pace. First down, Penn State has averaged three yards. Alabama, 2.9. They need to average about four yards on first down to be successful. Hollingsworth had it batted down. Lou Benfani was looking to run upfield with an interception. Gary Hollingsworth set up again another 6-4 quarterback just like Tony Saka the defensive lineman with their hands up sometimes as a defensive lineman when you get blocked and you know you're not going to get to the quarterback get your hands in the air to try to make a block the passing lane of the quarterback and Ben Fadi was able to do that on that play, on that play. On second and ten the delay goes nowhere Kevin Turner wrapped up by several tacklers of Penn State, including Frank Gianetti, number 85. When you get to that 35-yard line, you can expect Penn State to blitz. They brought both inside linebackers. Alabama had a draw call. No lead blocker on the linebackers. Again, a good call by the Penn State defense. Alabama's in that third and long again. Now three of seven on third down, but they have converted on their last two third down tries. They may go to the all curl again. They do, and it's nearly intercepted. Derek Bonner, who was shaken up a couple of plays ago, 
back into the football game. He's a true freshman from Greensboro, Pennsylvania. He knocked it down. It's the same play they went to on Lamont Russell a little bit ago. It's a curl at the sticks, but Derek Bachna sat on the curl because there was no threat of a deep route. He sat right on it and almost intercepted the ball. Williamson to punt. He'll try to pin, pin Penn State in. Not easy to say, but not easy to do either. Punt through the end zone for Tank Williamson. And Penn State takes over first and 10 at its own 20. Lead over earlier today on ESPN. Shelly Hammonds with his first carry of the day. He's back to the line of scrimmage. Hammonds was a great story last week when he stepped in as the third string tailback and rushed for 208 yards against Boston College, including 191 in the second half. Just three weeks ago, he was a third string safety. Well, the problem is when he's played safety and went through the camp and his defensive back, he doesn't know all the offensive plays, and that's why they started with Leroy Thompson. But Leroy, just uh, just a little bit hesitant here early in the ball game, so they're going to go with a different tailback right now to try to get something going. Problems on first down, plaguing both teams. Saka cannot connect with David Daniels. Third and ten upcoming. Penn State coaches, Joe Paterno and offensive coordinator Fran Gantner, really talk about the improvement of Tony Saka, that he's matured as a person. He's much less laid back. He seems much more serious and committed to what he's doing on the football field. And you saw Tony Sacco the last couple of years. He does look like an improved player. Well, I think he's a good quarterback. They also have another quarterback on the sideline that can come in this football game and make things happen, Tom Bill. The dime defense is in. All the defensive backs are in again for Alabama. Under pressure. Sacco gets away. But he stopped short of the first down at the 28-yard line. Derek Oden made the tackle, and the Crimson Tide defenders bit upset that they didn't throw Tony Saka for a big loss. Well, Fran Ganner, I'm sure, doesn't want to be in this situation. Look at all the defensive backs again. That's why Tony Saka doesn't have anything open. Look at the coverage on the three receivers that he has. They're all covered. There's no place to throw the football. Tony Saka did the wise thing, took it down. What Penn State must do is throw in first down and run in those third and long situations when they bring the dime defense in. Elkowski to punt. Very little wind to speak of today here in Tuscaloosa. Anderson straight through the middle and out to the 44-yard line. A defensive struggle on homecoming weekend in Tuscaloosa. It's three here. He was playing more on homecomings than we were. Does that mean people don't think you have a very good football team when they invite you over for homecoming? Of course, that's not the case in this instance with Penn State, the visitors, but by and large, you try to schedule a patsy on homecoming. Penalty flags fly on this play, the first down play for Alabama. Well, that year, I thought we should have took a float with us every week when we went on the road. <laughs> Joe Shirk, the referee, tells us it's a clip against Alabama. Try to screen pass on the right side, and uh, Penn State reacted quick to it, and they clipped Leonard Humphreys, number six. Penalty is clipping by the offense, 15 yards, previous spot, still first down. Watch the screen set up, and there's the clip. Roger Schultz, the center from Atlanta, Georgia, who's an outstanding player. He's a captain of this offensive line, makes a lot of line calls for the offensive line of Alabama. He was caught on the clip. First and 25, Bama backed up to its own 30. Hollingsworth. Caught. For a gain of seven, out to the 37. Robert Jones able to hang on despite the fact that he took a big pop. You'll find that the receivers are going to be Lamont Russell and the tailbacks. Here comes McKenzie on the rush right here. Spins out in pretty good position to make the play. Gary Hollingsworth avoids the sack. Gets the completion to the running back Robert Jones. Are you Still surprised by the 15 attempts for Hollingsworth just midway through the second quarter? Is There's pass number 16, incomplete. 
intended for Turner. No, I don't think so, because when you look at Penn State, you know it's going to be very difficult to run. So you need to throw on early downs and run on late downs. Both teams, I don't want, I don't believe either coaching staff can win this football game being in long yardage situations all the time because they're both so strong on defense. Right now they have third and all the way to Huntsville to get a first down. And uh, you know, you're playing against a, a very solid defensive football team that can run and now Penn State uses a different uh, attack here. They don't go with a lot of extra defensive backs. They play with the people they have in there. Third and 18. Hollingsworth looking for more than that. It's out of bounds. Finkley, the nearest receiver, but he was well covered on the play by Greg Ducetti. And the Alabama offense, which has not scored a touchdown in more than eight quarters, is hearing the boos. I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. I tell you, when you come off an emotional game, Tennessee was an emotional football game. Tennessee had the same problem because they came off their homecoming game when they played Alabama last week. They look a little bit lethargic, a little bit flat right now. And Gene Stallings is going to have to, at halftime, get him in there and uh, read the riot act to him offensively. Defensively, they're playing well. Williamson got it away under a strong rush. Tyson Thomas ruled down. He coughed it up, but the whistle blows the play dead at the 37-yard line. I'll tell you one thing, and it's leading to that. I think officials are really... People are booing them this year, and they're seeing a lot of mistakes. I think eventually the NCAA will have to hire one man to control all the officials and not have different leagues have their own officials groups. And I think we're coming to that. Look, this looked like a fumble from our vantage point. But Tyson Thomas is spinning around right here. There oh, that ball's definite gone. fumble. We have the ability to replay. <laughs> First and 10, Penn State, the Nittany Lions lead three to nothing. With just more than seven minutes remaining in the first half. Second. Down at the line of scrimmage, here's Tim. That's up a huge matchup next week for our game, Colorado at Nebraska. Well, I'll tell you, we've been to Nebraska before with teams, and it's a tough place to play. Colorado, Nebraska next week. Stay tuned for that one. That'll be a great showdown. Nebraska has been criticized for its soft schedule, but nothing soft about the Buffaloes as they come stampeding in next week. Gene Stallings is on the officials on the sideline. He's trying to get the next call. It's too late for that one, Gene. Get the next one. We saw last week, he gives the officials a pretty good working over from the sideline. Thompson, short side of the field. Flag flies where you would expect holding back at the line of scrimmage. Is this the next call? Gene might have had the payoff very quickly. 55 white, I believe, is what you just heard the umpire say. And that would be Dave Brzezinczyk, the right guard. Gene Stallings' mood has improved dramatically. Well, the only thing that's going to do is the next time there's a call, Gene's going to be on that guy worse <laughs> in front of him. The line judge. Gene's talking to Mal Moore there. We've seen a couple of times today graphics with Gene Stallings' record. Even Gene admits it's not a very impressive record, but I think in fairness to Gene Stallings, he has coached some football teams that were not particularly talented. Well, when you take different coaching jobs, some are very difficult, and some are programs that have had losing seasons, so it's very difficult to have a great win-loss record when you're in some of those situations, but you make gradual improvement, that's what you need to do. Dime defense again for Alabama. Thompson. Hit first by Byron Holbrooks, and a couple of other Alabama defenders finished him off. Penn State went to a slow counter play. You see the tackle pulling from the backside. Paul Seaver. There's just no place to go. The backside defensive uh, line for Alabama. Byron Holbrooks on that particular play getting penetration. When the tackle pulled, he came underneath him and made the play. The Lions in reverse facing third and 22 with 5-12 left in the first half. 3-0 Penn State. Wouldn't be a bit surprised. He just lays this one out and goes for a deep throw. Setting up a screen, but that was snuffed out by Alabama. And he is down. Holbrooks 
Stewart and Odin all there for the Alabama defense. As I said earlier, you don't want to be in third and long situations against a dime defense. The percentages aren't good for you. They had a screen, but the screen was spelled out great by Derek Golden. Tony Saka made a wise decision right there. He could have thrown the screen and uh, probably maybe got an intercepted. He kept the football and now pumped the football into defense on the field. Elkowski, a good kick. Anderson from the 34. And down at the 42. These two teams have played many memorable games in the past, including 1979. Who is seeing action as a starter this year because of the injuries to Sanderson and Wimbley? Alabama's throwing a lot on first down. They know it's tough to run against that front, so they're going to try to open it up a little bit and reduce the Penn State defense by motion. This is a pretty good throw by Gary Hollingsworth. That ball should have been caught. Alabama's had some great quarterbacks here, a great tradition of quarterbacks. Namath, Stabler, Bart Starr, Richard Todd, among others. Ken Stabler was in town yesterday, and our reports were that Bart Starr was to be here today. Hollingsworth, incomplete. Ten situation, Gene Stallings looking at his play sheet here. This might be time for the shovel draw. Or something to get the ball to Lamont Russell. Exactly four minutes left in the first half. It's Penn State three and Alabama nothing. Too high and nearly intercepted. Derek Bonna, the true freshman, had his hands on it but couldn't pick it off. The man was open, but Hollingsworth airmailed Donnie Finkler. Well, I hope the fans aren't booing Gary Hollingsworth because I don't believe it's it. When you lose so many receivers in a tailback like Saran Stacey, it's just very difficult to right away to get to receivers. He just overthrew this particular ball. Derek Bonham was good in good coverage. Can't lose three key producers like that on offense and not affect him. Penn State sets up a return. Tyson Thomas will return it. Only the punter to beat at the moment, and Tank Williamson makes the tackle at the 33 of Alabama. A 46-yard return for Tyson Thomas, the sophomore from York, Pennsylvania. Tyson Thomas read his blocks real well. They set the wall up. You see the cross blocks right here to get the first man down. There's a good block. Now the wall's set up. The only player is the punter. Tank Williamson that can make that play. Now the Alabama defense is called on in the red zone to make something happen. Leroy Thompson. Driven down by Ephraim Thomas after a short game. Here's Tim. Gentleman. He has a famous name, that player, Bino. Named after our own Bino Cook. Who looked marvelous in his various Halloween costumes on game day today. Thompson. Again, Thomas polished him off after Sullins made the original hit. A couple of great sticks by Ephraim Thomas, the free safety from Long Beach, California. I'm telling you, Ephraim Thomas has made two big hits. John Sullins down here injured. Watch him. John Sullins, the linebacker, reads the sweep, moves in the direction of plays on an inside, inside out course right now on the running back, Leroy Thompson. Perfect position to make the play. Sets him up. Ephraim Thomas finishes him off. I tell you, when you look at this football game across the country, extra DBs in the game again on third down and more than five. Tony Sackham may have to run and roll out a little bit on this dime defense to try to get something going in a passing game. Third and five. Lots of time. Man open. Incomplete. Daniels, the intended receiver. The pass was a bit behind him from Tony Sackham. Joe's a little upset. Mark McMillan made the play on this play. He's a junior college player that I had signed at the University of Pittsburgh. This is a crossing route by David Daniels. He's a big play type receiver for Penn State. He's open and just ball thrown behind him. Why didn't he go to Pittsburgh if you had him sign? Well, he changed his mind at the last minute and uh, decided to come to Alabama. 46-yard try for Fayette. It will be the longest of his career. It's blocked. George Teague rambling with it. 
into Penn State territory and out of bounds at the 46. football because they took the key away that the rush will come from the inside here Brian Holbrooks comes inside he almost could have took the ball off the tee he got in there so quick but everybody since the tee was taken away will always come up inside now the challenge again goes to the Penn State defense Alabama has blocked a field goal for the second straight week Hollingsworth to Jones on first down Look from the first angle that the holder might have bobbled the snap for Penn State. Watch Byron Holbrook come right between the center and come free, not even blocked. That ball had no chance of being no. kicked. And nothing wrong with the hold from that angle. Second and short, Turner had it glance off his hand. Again, the misconnections, the timing still a little bit off with Hollingsworth and these new backs and receivers. Gene Stallings says the timing is improving, but it probably is never going to get to the point where he would like it to be this year. Gary Hollingsworth went to the sideline to Mal Moore to try to get the call rather than sending a substitute in, giving the call from the sideline. Byron Holbrooks accepting the congratulations along the Alabama sideline for his field goal block. Third and four. 3-0 Penn State, a minute 44 to play in the first half. Penn State with a blitz. Hollingsworth, complete but short of a first down. I think Gene Stallings has a real tough decision here. The way his offense is playing, I think he's got to go for this fourth down situation. Derek Warren, the catch, down a yard short of the first down. Alabama will call a timeout to ponder that decision. Well, I don't think there's any choice with the time he's got to go for the first down. Or fourth and one, Alabama is a perfect 28 of 28. Well, I'm going to tell you this 29th time is going to be a, a tough yard to get against this defense. On fourth and one. Take into the line, pass caught by Turner. First down, Alabama. The fake went up and over. The football went to Turner along the sideline. Four new downs for the Tide and a first down at the 30 of Penn State. Good play call by the Alabama coaches. Watch the fake by Gary Hollingsworth. Now the acting job. He just watches. He's got everybody fooled. No one knows where the football is at. The back slips out in the flat, is uncovered, and just very fortunate didn't step out of bounds when he caught the football. Now the clock becomes a factor in the first half. Alabama has one timeout remaining with a minute 16 left in the half. Turner, fumble. And Penn State has it back at the 19. Willie Thomas recovered the fumble of Kevin Turner. Very difficult to have that happen, especially when yards are as tough as they are to get in this particular ball game. Watch Kevin Turner here. Just a quick slant play by the fullback, and he cuts it way back. You see the hole that's going to open on the backside because Penn State overruns it. But he never had the football again. The ball popped out before any Penn State player made a hit. What you always ask your defense to do when you're backed up in that red zone area or they, they make a play, get the football back, get a turnover. Now I think Penn State will just be satisfied to sit on it. If not, they do have three timeouts remaining. Thompson. Down at the 25 after a gain of five. And the Lions will indeed will let the clock run inside a minute. It's been a good football game defensively. I think both offenses, when they go in at halftime, are going to be on those blackboards trying to figure out exactly what they can get in the second half. What they can exploit in the other team's defense. Thompson came in averaging four and a half yards a carry. That is not the case today. What they're trying to do with him right here is just get him again where he didn't play last week. Get him a couple of carries here just before half, getting the flow of the ball game. The Lions do not have to run another play. Third and one for Penn State. I don't think they'll come out of the huddle. 
No, they won't. Gene Stallings walks off at the half, trailing three to nothing. Stay tuned for our halftime report, the Rayovac halftime report with Tim Brando and Lee Corso. Three nothing Nittany Lions at halftime. In the first half, for Alabama, seven. Total offense, 94 yards for Alabama, 60 for Penn State. Been a good defensive battle. Both these are very strong defensive football teams. I think when you look at Penn State, they've, they've had a little bit of a problem on third down. I look for Tony Sacker to throw a little bit more on first down or Joe to continue to play to his defense. He has to he'll make that choice here early in the third quarter. Philip Doyle to kick off as the second half begins. Shelly Hammonds out to the 25. Here's why Penn State, here's what Tony Saka sees. Count these defensive backs as you see. Take the middle linebacker right there in front of the umpire. You have seven defensive backs. I've been saying they've been in a dime defense most of the day they have. Add one more. They're 11 cents there in the secondary. <laughs> now watch what Tony Saka sees. Look at all these defensive backs. That's why I think Penn State will throw more on first down. They don't want to get in these third down situations. First and 10, Penn State begins the second half from its own 25. Leroy Thompson. No gain on first down. Robert Stewart. John Sullins made the tackle. Byron Holbrooks also there for Alabama. Watch Robert Stewart, the middle guard. You get a chance to see him, 34. Watch him come off the block. He's blocked, comes underneath the block, and along with Byron Holbrooks, makes the play. Last week against Tennessee, Robert Stewart, Byron Holbrooks, and George Thornton held up against that good Tennessee offensive line and then forced Tennessee into throwing situations. Second down, 10. The only points in this game came off a turnover by Alabama. An interception thrown by Hollingsworth. John Sullins, who had a fine first half, is picking up right where he started on the first two plays of the second half. So it's a play, a split draw that was going to go to the right side. Watch Sullins. He takes a step to the right side, now comes back and makes the play on Leroy Thompson. Leroy Thompson broke it back. He saw it, came back, made the play. Dime defense in the ball game now. On third and eight. Diamond a penny, 11 cents. Saka. Nearly intercepted. Intended for the tight end, Al Golden. It was nearly picked off by Stacy Harrison. There's just nothing there, Sean. It's a very, as I said before, low percentage throw. They'll start sprinting out or throwing on first down. So as you start the second half, first five minutes of any half is, is important. This half, it's very important for Alabama to get something going. Doug Helkowski to punt. Chris Anderson. Turns the corner. He goes out of bounds in Penn State territory at the 48. That'll make uh, Alabama alum Bart Starr happy. He's with Kevin. All right, thank you so much, Sean. One of the great players ever to come out of Alabama, Bart Starr. You didn't play for Bear Bryant, but your paths definitely crossed, didn't they? Kevin, they did. He was um, at Kentucky at the time and recruited me heavily, and I wanted to go there, but when I discovered my wife to be, I uh, would not go up to Kentucky. She was going to Auburn. I came here so I could chase across the state after her. What do you think of quarterback Hollingsworth here for Alabama? Well, I think he's struggling today, and he has the last couple, but I saw him play a year ago, and he was outstanding. I hope he can get on track. All right, thanks. Bart Starr. Thank you. Great player at Alabama and Green Bay. Back upstairs. Hollingsworth picked off. The ball goes right back to Penn State. The interception by Reggie Gibbons his first career interception. Well, Gary Hollingsworth will be back in here. Uh, this is a throw that was picked off. You see it drop back. They went to four wide receivers and trying to throw an A option on the play. Just threw it right to the linebacker, Reggie Givens. 
Now, here you got Penn State's defense. They get the big punt return, and all of a sudden that defense comes in and makes things happen. And they're very, very strong after a turnover, not allowing you much. Here's the first down throw. Saka was looking deep. Now he has some running room. First down, flag thrown downfield. Saka knocked out of bounds by Ephraim Thomas of the 34. Even though that was well covered, Sean, I think that's the thing they have to do on first down so that they, if they're going to throw the football, they don't want to throw it against those extra DBs in there. So their best throwing down will be first down right now. Tony Saka looked, things were covered, took off running with it, picked up good yardage. As you said, there's a flag. Clipping. The injured Alabama player is Derek Oden. He was well out of bounds along the Penn State sideline. Watch a play. Watch David Daniels, number 26, come into your screen right here. And that's where they called the clip. Very difficult for me to see if he had his head in front or not. The official didn't feel he did, so he called the penalty. And it looked like Oden got wiped out by his own man, Ephraim Thomas, who made the tackle. Derek's walking off under his own power. It'd be a first and seven situation after the penalty. First down and six with the ball moved back to midfield. Terry Smith out of bounds. He was trying to get away from Mark McMillan. But they'll mark him out of bounds back at the 39-yard line. Good for a first down for Penn State. 11-yard game. Very safe throw. First down pass again by Penn State. A fake to, to Gash. And then the quick screen out here to Terry Smith. Now watch the other receiver set up the block inside. Picked up a good yardage, picked up the first down. Fran Ganner now, again, opened it up a little bit on first down. Fran Ganner was a player at Penn State, played in front of the, the great running back Franco Harrison of bowl game. Saw Franco's ability and decided to go be a coach. <laughs> Penn State trying to build on a 3-0 lead. Thompson, good cutback to pick up a yard to the 38. George Thornton made the tackle. Watch George Stewart, the middle guard now, 34, get up the field again. He destroys the play because he gets so much penetration in the backfield. He just gives the, the uh, tailback, Leroy Thompson, zero options of where to take the football. George Thornton, who made the tackle, is the injured player. 3-0 Penn State. We'll be right back. He went slowly off the field, but he appeared to be okay. Alabama is a little short in the defensive line. Eric Curry out defensive lineman is not playing today with an injured knee. Second and nine, Saka dumps it off for Thompson. He's down to the 33, still four yards short of the first down. And Mike, along the sidelines, both backup quarterbacks are warming up. Tom Bill of Penn State, wearing number 12 in the distance. And on the far sideline, Danny Woodson of Alabama has also been thrown. You talk about a competitor. I like Tom Bill. I've, uh, as I say, coached against him the last couple years. He's a competitor. He'll fight you every down. Unbalanced line to the left. Thompson. And into his own blocker and tripped down back at the 38-yard line. I think Joe's going to punt him in the hole right here. Looked like he ran into the back of the legs of Paul Seaver, the guard who was pulling on the play. Robert Stewart did that because of, again, penetration from that nose guard position. He's doing a great job against the Penn State center. Doug Pelkowski. End over end, end over end kick that bounces into the end zone. Let's go down the sidelines with Kevin Kyler from Mobile at quarterback. 
Danny is an excellent athlete. I've heard so much about him in the, in the city of Mobile, Alabama. They're very proud of him, and uh, he is a better athlete probably than Gary Hollingsworth. Gary Hollingsworth is a traditional drop-back quarterback. I like Gary Hollingsworth. I really do. I think he's he's had some tough things. There's Danny Woodson rushing 11 rushes for 92 yards, so you know he's capable on a quarterback draw or some kind of sprint out. Trying to throw, now running for his life. He lost the football. Two consecutive losses. Matt Hammond had to recover it inside the five for Alabama. Sean, there may be something wrong with Gary Hollingsworth, too. He may have picked up an injury. We can check with Kevin on that, or something may be wrong with him right now that they have went to Danny Woodson in this particular situation. Hollingsworth's numbers, and there he is. Nothing apparently wrong with him. 10 for 25 for 74 yards and two interceptions. And the Alabama offense has now gone more than nine quarters without scoring a touchdown. One thing you don't want right now if you're Alabama is a turnover that can turn into points for Penn State. And they're going to play it safe. Classic. Across the 10. And some room for the punter, Tank Williamson. You know, a lot of times the fans want a quarterback change, but you got to remember when you make that change, you're going to be with that quarterback for a while because it's tough to bring the other guy back because uh, all of a sudden you sit him down and get a chance to talk with him. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gary Hollingsworth. That wasn't a bad series for Danny Woodson. It's a tough situation to come into the ball game like that. It wasn't a very good one. No, it wasn't. But uh, but again, you're asking a guy to come in and uh, cold. He's been sitting over there all all afternoon, and uh, it just takes a little while to get warmed up and get in the flow of the ball game. Tyson Thomas driven all the way back to his own 38. He covered a lot of ground to return it five yards. A 49-yard punt. And we throw with Danny Woodson right now. Something to get his offense going. Sack up play action. Deflected. And intercepted by Alabama. John Sullins with the interception for the Crimson Tide. What a nice interception by John Sullins. You got play action with Tony Saka coming out the backside here after a fake. Watch Sales over the middle. He's open. Just took him a little bit too long to try to get the ball to him. Derek Olden with the tip. Now look at the interception. You talk about a great interception. That can be the type of play to turn the ball game around. Second interception of the year for Sullins. Woodson, back at quarterback, throws too high for Finkley. Flags fly from a couple of angles. All these Bama fans have been calling for pass interference on several occasions today, and finally they get the flags they've been looking for. Danny Woodson on a fake, and again, they're looking for Danny Woodson to get something started, and he, he starts by getting this ball right to number 15. Look at the interference there by Darren Perry. Reaction by Danny Woodson. Ice water in his veins. He's ready to try to take him down and get him in that area where they can get some scores. It's a, in college football, you got the penalty from the line of scrimmage, so it's first and 10 now as they cross the 50-yard line. From the 48. Woodson trying to get Alabama in the end zone for the first time in more than nine quarters. Lassick thrown down for a loss. Rich McKenzie, the linebacker, the first man to make the play. We talked about Rich McKenzie early, the tremendous talent that he is. Watch number 99 come inside the block at a tight end. Just came underneath it, he beat the block of Derek Warren, just made the play, penetration again in the backfield. Both these teams today have had tremendous penetration in the backfield of the both teams. Woodson slip. He gained two back to midfield. Woodson was on campus but did not play football last season of war in 1988. He's seeing his first action here in 1990 in three years. He was a highly recruited athlete. 
McKenzie made the tackle again. Third down, long situation. Two different styles here, two different philosophies. Penn State stays on the field with their team. They don't do, don't do a lot of substitution. Passing situation. There's Philip Doyle, number 17, just hoping they can get down close enough where he can get a chance to tie this one. He missed on his only chance this afternoon. On third and 12. Woodson with time throws way too high. Intended for Kevin Lee. Okay, Danny Woodson has a very strong arm. It's good coverage by Penn State. Tank Williamson's been the most valuable player for this Alabama team because he's had some great punts that's bailed them out of trouble. He's certainly been the busiest player for Alabama. This is seventh punt midway through the third quarter. It's three nothing Penn State. Thomas started at the 17, down just across the 25. ESPN is the football. San Francisco and Dallas coming up on November 11th. Tom Bill's into the football game. They're making a quarterback change for Penn State also. Bill, man open, Sam Gash first down. He drives for more across the 40 and down at the 41. Tom Bill has a lot of experience. When you bring him off the bench, you're bringing a seasoned veteran off the bench. Watch him here on a drop back pass. Watch Sam Gass, the fullback. He's going to be the player who goes out and just runs a little option route where he's going to sit down. Ricky Sales is up inside. He's gets, he gets the coverage of the corner and the backer, which opens Sam Gash. Tom Bill, fifth-year senior from Flemington, New Jersey. up by Stewart and dropped by Robert Stewart after a short game. This ball game one way or another. Bill complete to Thompson short of a first down short of midfield at the 49. Bill's pass. Tom Bill has engineered some good drives, engineered a, a good one against me last year when I was coaching at the University of Pittsburgh. He's he's had his troubles at uh, at Penn State, but I'm going to tell you, I admire the kid. I, I think he really has fought uh, publicity, everything. The guy has fought. He's worked, and uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm proud to see him on the football field. He's battled back from alcohol problems that caused him to leave school for the spring semester, went through a rehabilitation program, and He's back on campus and trying to lead the Penn State offense into Alabama territory. He got into Alabama territory, but whether or not he picked up the first down depends upon the spot. John Sullivan has been busy as a linebacker. He made a tackle in that play. It was third and two, and that's just about what Bill picked up at the 49 of Alabama. Well, yardage is so tough to come by that on third and short yardage, Fran Ganner made a decision to try to roll Tom Bill out, figuring that if the outside play, pass plays open, he could throw it. If not, maybe able to carry it for the first down. First down. And not by much. There's Fran Ganner in the background. Watch Tom Bill again come out. He's got one receiver that's running an out pass. If he's open, he's going to throw it. Otherwise, he's running the football and trying to pick the first down up. He's trying to get up, get outside of all that mess inside right now. The defensive lineman controlling the line of scrimmage. And, he's, and maybe that's what Alabama will try to do with Danny Woodson, roll him a little bit more when he comes back in. Bill has running room. He has to run. As he crossed the line, a couple of tacklers missed him. Then he got leveled. Derek Godin drilled him. But Bill bounces right back up. He picked up 19. And Penn State is rolling into tide territory at the 30-yard line. Watch the hit that Tom Bill takes right here. Derek Golden. Penn State has drastically changed during the second half. On first down, it's become a passing down for them. And even though the quarterback's running it, they're getting him outside and throwing the football. First and 10 from the Alabama 30. 440 to play third quarter, 3-0 Penn State. Thompson tripped up after a gain of one. When you look at statistics in a football game, I've always felt like if you had a defense, 
that could stop the run and slow it down, that you'd be successful. You'd win your share games. Joe Paterno, as you see here, his team has always been that type of defense. Gene Stallings and his defensive coaching staff have brought the same type of philosophy. Take the run away. You can take the run away and force somebody to throw the football, and you can play percentages on them. You have a chance to win the football game. Penn State last week held Boston College to minus four yards rushing. Thompson had it go through his hands. Ephraim Thomas had the coverage. He has been flying around the field today as Ephraim Thomas. It is second year at Alabama after two years at Long Beach Community College in Long Beach, California. Ephraim Thomas has made some big plays all day. Tom Bell's going to try to hit his back coming out of the backfield. Leroy Thompson, they've had some success with that. But again, he just couldn't hold on. The diamond of pennies in on defense right now. But Tom Bill. First time out used by either team in the second half. 357 left in the third quarter. 3-0 Penn State. <laughs> Alabama. Penn State facing third and nine at the 29-yard line of Alabama. Tom Bill. Look out. Jeremy Nunley with the sack. Red shirt freshman from Winchester, Tennessee. Good coverage again by Alabama and that extra bat defensive back set. Tom Bill had some time. He was looking for the crossing route. Wasn't there. Craig Fayak to try what would be a career-long 50-yard field goal. It's good. A line drive through the uprights for Craig Fayak from 50 yards. Longest field goal of his career. And with 3.12 left in the third quarter, Penn State has a 6-0 lead. You talk about a big three points now because that takes Philip Doyle out of the ball game a little bit as we go to the fourth quarter, the Alabama place kicker. He can tack on that field goal. Gene Stallings, again, has done such a great job at Alabama. And he's looking for some spark in his offense. Tom Bill got his offense moving a little bit. He's looking for the same thing out of Danny Woodson. And Joe Paterno says he is sorry to see this rivalry with Alabama end from his point of view, playing a game against the Southeast Conference team, playing every other year here in the Southeast, gives the Penn State alumni in this area a chance to see the team in person, and also calls the attention of recruits in this area to Penn State football. Joe Paterno told me last night, they have to have a game in the South for recruiting and for their alumni. Hates to see this one in, but there's gonna be a lot of rivalries in when he goes to the Big Ten. Joe hopes they'll start playing in the Big Ten by 1993. He thinks that's possible. A short kick taken by Lorenzo Cole. He's out to the 32. And the quarterback will be Danny Woodson as Alabama takes over. Still, neither team has reached 100 yards in total offense. Well, the first thing when you look at that statistic, you say, what's wrong with the offense? Don't say what's wrong with the offense. I'm telling you, this is two great defensive football teams that have forced this action today. 6-0 Penn State. The fullback gets the call on first down and picked up three, Kevin Turner. We'd look for something where, again, Danny Woodson play actions and get him outside or maybe a fake reverse or something to try to get a big play or throw the ball deep down the field. That's what Alabama needs right now, some kind of big play. Gene Stallings is call all the right uh, notes on defense. He just needs something to, to get a big play on offense. Play action. Woodson has had trouble with his footing, and he slips down. He saw Eric Ravati, number 94, coming after him. That's a couple of times since Woodson has come in that he's tried to put the brakes on, and he has slipped down. 
Well, Penn State, when they see Danny Woodson comes in, knows their outside linebackers have to be very cautious of Danny Woodson going outside. Eric Gravati's there, played to play very well. Gary Hollingsworth's in there. You know the pass is going to be a drop back pass most of the time. They'll roll him out a little bit. Woodson gives you more of a running threat in there as a quarterback. See the tape around the shoes of Woodson. Don't know if that's the problem. Sometimes you can't get a grip when you do that. Woodson, here's where he's dangerous. Knocked down. Back with this series started at the 32 on fourth and 10. Here comes Tank Williamson onto the field. I'll tell you, this is a tough defense for any quarterback. This Penn State defense gets better every week. And Alabama on the other side, just as strong defensively. Eighth punt for Williamson. That's a career high in a single game. The 50 yarder he had earlier, the longest punt of his career. He's punted well today. Tyson Thomas at the 30. And out to the 38 yard line. Less than a minute to play in the third quarter. Gene Stallings is looking at 10 quarters now since Alabama's last touchdown. We said a little while ago about big win over Oklahoma. Another pass on first down for Bill. Going long, man open. Ricky Sales deep into Alabama territory at the 37-yard line. We watched a lot of film of Penn State the last couple of days, and you were impressed with the receiving ability of Rick Sales. Well, he gives him a different dimension because he's such a good athlete. Tom Bill goes back to throw. He's got Ricky Sales running the corner route behind the pass, the reception of uh, Gash. He's wide open. Again, the key is getting that one foot in bounds. Efren Thomas forcing him out. 26-yard gain for Sales. Delay to Thompson. He picked up one. I can't tell you, uh, you know, having been on the sideline and coaching for 23 years, how you have 25 seconds to make a decision. People are critical for you making this move or that move, and you're always trying to push the right buttons. Gene Stallings trying to push him right now. Joe Paterno's trying to push him right now. In this kind of game, six to nothing, it's been a very well-played football game. You're just trying to look for that one little break to push you over the edge and to, and to win the game. It's a tough, tough way to make a living. Second and just about 10. Bill, nice pass, but Terry Smith couldn't hang on. That required perfect touch from Bill, and he laid it right in there. He's been sharp since coming off the bench. Well, he has. He's waited for his chance. The thing about him, he's a team player, too. You don't see where he's complained about not playing time. He just, give me a chance. When I get my chance, I'll make the most of it. Here you see the drop back pass. It's a post pattern, five-step drop. He delivers the ball, a little bit of a floater, but it's thrown right where it should be. Stacy Harrison on the coverage did a pretty good job on Terry Smith out of Gateway High School in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. The diamond a penny. I'm calling that 11 cents. Oh. <laughs> I learned that in Crestline, Ohio. Blitz for Alabama. Bill threw it away. And wisely so. And you talk about a good decision now. A lot of young quarterbacks would have taken a the sack here. He, he didn't want to take the sack because he knows he's, he's in pretty good field position. Fourth down upcoming for Penn State. That is the end of the third quarter. A field goal for the Lions in the third. They lead 6-37. Both these two guys have coached a great ball game today with their staff. We've got, we've got a good finish. Final Remember, quarter. Halkowski has had problems in the past with punts being blocked. That one's a shank. Spotted at the 26. Another memorable game between these two teams who played in 1983. 1983, Alabama versus Penn State. In the final seconds, Alabama 4-28. You notice an interesting part of that play. The clock never moved off one second, but the official time kept on the field. And that was the game's final play in 83. Play flicker. Woodson runs away from the trouble. Flags down in the offensive backfield. Woodson out to midfield. This one is likely to come back. Flag thrown. 
Back at the 17-yard line, a 32-yard game for Woodson if it stands. Well, Danny Woodson showed you what kind of athlete he is right here on this particular play. He became a running back very quickly in that set. Clipping the call, and this play will come back. Watch Danny Woodson. He pitches, and he goes straight back. Now you got the flea flicker on. Danny Woodson knew he didn't have time to get the ball thrown, so he just took off. And really a nice job running the football. Robert Jones with a good block to tailback, number 28. Again, both coaches pacing that sideline. <laughs> First time that Stallings and Paterno have matched wits. Gene Stallings says he really doesn't know Joe Paterno very well, but he has always admired his coaching and the kind of program he has run at Penn State over the years. This is the kind of situation Penn State forces you into and forces you into a turnover to try to take the ball game away from you right now. Danny Woodson's going to be careful. From his own 13, he's blitzed and he is down. Keith Goganis, the first Nittany Lion to get to the quarterback. When you're in a, put in a situation first and uh, 25 yards, that opens up so many things to do defensively. Keith Goganis is going to come in a blitz. They're bringing he into strong safety. Just is not picked up. Danny Woodson takes, does the right thing, goes down and, uh, and takes the uh, sack. Again, now the key, you don't want this ball game to be lost with 13.53 on the clock offensively right here. Defense has played great. Trying to get it out of here, but you've got a long way almost to the state of Mississippi to get a first down. And time running down to get this playoff. The fans see the play clock ticking down to four seconds, two seconds, and they just did get it off. In his own end zone, long throw, double coverage. Finkley watches it be picked off by Darren Perry. Perry still on his feet and down at the 42-yard line of Alabama. What? Second interception today for Darren Perry, the first thrown by Danny Woodson. Yeah, Danny Woodson did a nice job getting that ball. Oh, that's just like a punt. He was going downtown and trying to get all he can get on it. He's under tremendous pressure. See him drop back here. He'll move to the right as the pocket. Here's somebody right in his face. He just throws it as far as he can throw it. There's good coverage on it. Darren Perry makes the interception. Offensive line does a nice job right here, and then it collapses a little bit. There's the late pressure. Six career interceptions for Darren Perry now, four of them against Alabama. One last year, one at 88, and two today. Moving along the line before the snap. And here's a problem you get into with the quarterback change sometimes. They're used to Tony Saka, they're used to his play call. Now you get Tom Bills trying to draw Alabama off, and your own player jumps. Ball start the call against Joe Paterno's Lions. The right, right guard there. a little anxious. Greg Huntington out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Just a little movement there. Went to high school in Cincinnati, but spent 11 years of his youth in Birmingham, Alabama. And Huntington's family moved back to Birmingham recently. He said his girlfriend goes to Alabama. That's like Bart Starr says, sometimes that'll overcome a coach's touch. <laughs> Leroy Thompson rips through a hole. He's inside the 40 and down at the 38. One of the few times today that Thompson has been able to get free. Both these teams are going to keep their ratings as defense is against the rush. Here's the first play. Again, Robert Stewart got up the field. He just got too far up the field that particular time. And Leroy Thompson gets in the secondary. Stacey Harrison makes the tackle. He's got a little bit too much penetration that time. Penn State now is playing to get in that three-point area. To try to put this one out of reach. Gash avoids the tackle of Thomas. Alabama has had its troubles in the fourth quarter throughout this season. Lack of depth, certainly a big part of that. And perhaps this defense, which has played so well today, is now tiring as Thomas had a chance to tackle Gash early on but missed him. This is a play designed to go outside. It looks like a play that's going to go inside. Sam Gash takes it outside, and again, a missed tackle. Stacy Harrison on the tackle. Now they're in that field goal range. Tom Bill would like to take him in for the touchdown. Try to put this one out of reach. 
First and 10 at the 21 of Alabama. 12 and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Penn State leads six to nothing. Thompson hit by Stewart behind the line of scrimmage and he squirted back to the line. Robert Stewart, the junior from Ashford, Alabama, made the play. Watch Robert Stewart. He's going to slant this way. The motion comes this way. He beats the block of the center. He keeps lateral pursuit and makes the play on Leroy Thompson. Penn State brought the motion man into the short side of the field, into the tight inside. They slanted into it. A good call by Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator of Alabama. Gene Stalling says that Alabama doesn't have any superstars on defense, but he points to Stewart as one of the players who played well consistently. Bill, incomplete, intended for Thompson. Throw is out of bounds. Third down and just about 10 upcoming for Penn State. Homecoming weekend at the University of Alabama. We're at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Penn State leads six to nothing. A first quarter 34-yard field goal by Craig Fayak following an interception by Darren Perry. And Fayak in the third quarter connected from 50 yards, a career long. The way this ball game's going, I wouldn't be surprised. Joe Paterno on third and nine here. It's a running play, a draw or something that sets his field goal up to try to go up nine. Up. Bill throws short, complete. Thompson short of a first down. Out of bounds. At the 17 for a pickup of four, but that's still nearly six yards shy of a first down, and the field goal team will come on, trying to make it a nine-point Penn State lead. Just a safe throw there to Leroy Thompson. It was a throw that just like a run sets him up in the field goal range. Remember now Alabama blocked that field goal last week and turned the ball game around against Tennessee. They're going to ask their defense to do the same thing. Watch the pressure from the inside. Watch the people right over the center. From 34 yards, it's good. Payak has been inconsistent this year, but with the exception of the block, he's come through for Penn State today. Three field goals for the Nittany Lions, and with 11.42 left in the fourth quarter, it's Penn State nine and Alabama nothing. Them again, Bo's. Bo games, there'll be a lot of deals made this Monday. Bo games are talking to people right now, and I know there's a date and everything, but the bowl people will be talking Monday and making some deals. Several bowls have scouts here today. Squib kick. Returned to the 29 yard line by the up man, Craig Harris, a reserve pullback. Fayak's third field goal of the football game, this one from 34. Makes it 9-0 Penn State. Gary Hollingsworth is back at quarterback. Well, I expect him back in there. I tell you, he's a good quarterback. You can't take his three top offensive players out of there and expect that he's not going to have some problems. It's going to take a little time. I said last week against Tennessee, it's like when you're coaching transition, like driving a car. The more you drive, the more you drive with one hand. And he'll become that way offensively when his new guys learn what to do. Classic, trying to bounce it outside. He's down for a loss. Darren Perry continues to have a huge football game for Penn State. Two interceptions today, and that's a three-yard loss. Penn State forces the football laterally. They make you move when you take the ball like that. It looks like you're going to get something out wide, and all of a sudden the corner's rolled up or strong safety's up there and run support. But they always make you work north and south. Hollingsworth throws underneath, caught by Martin Houston. He's wrapped up after a minimal game. I think the play you'll see right now is the all curl in the third down situation. They need to pick up 13, 14. These are bad, bad percentages. I don't care if Bart Stark comes back and throws on third and 12. I mean, it's, it's, it's just tough percentages to throw. Problems continue in the fourth quarter for Gene Stallings. They've been outscored 54 to 14 now with the field goal by Fayette. Time for Hollingsworth. 
short of a first down is Alabama on the completion of Sean Thomas. A reserve split end, and Gene Hollingsworth, or Gene Stallings rather, takes Gary Hollingsworth off the field and decides to punt with 10 minutes to play. Well, there's a lot of time, Sean. He's got a punt right now. But I think what he was upset about is the receiver didn't go the extra three yards for the first down. He broke it off a little too soon. Williamson. One of the bright spots today for Alabama, Williamson. Another booming punt. It drove Smith back to the 18. He is swarmed under at the 25. Penn State with the ball with a nine-point lead with 9.51 to play. Nothing Penn State with 9.51 left in the fourth quarter. And Penn State has it first and 10 at its own 26-yard line. Should we look for ball control here? I think so. You're going to work the clock now. Leroy Thompson is now starting to go. But again, there's penetration. John Sullins blitz through and made the play. Sullins has had a good football game. He's the coach's son. His dad, S.E. Sullins, an assistant coach at Auburn and Ole Miss, among others. Most kids were out getting hamburgers. He was watching film with his dad, and, uh, and it's developed. He, his dad was a fine football coach, coach from Mississippi State. The clock now becomes uh, an enemy for the Alabama defense. Alabama has all three of its timeouts remaining. Penn State has two left. Tom Bill. Deflected pass. Picked off but well out of bounds by Derek Oden. Tom Bill has moved Penn State more effectively than Tony Saka did. Does that create a quarterback controversy for Joe Paterno as he looks at the next week? Well, it doesn't for Joe Paterno. It will for the media and it will be for the fans, but it won't for Joe Paterno. What You ask all your players to be role players. Where you expect them to come into a role. This was a ball game where you needed Tom Bill. And I think next week you'll see Tony Saka, probably the quarterback, but Tom Bill now is the John Havlicek of this team. Come off the bench, six man, ready to go. six left in the fourth quarter nine nothing Penn State on the ground on third and ten Steve Webb slammed down Leroy Thompson Webb's a junior from Holt Alabama I think when you look at this Alabama football team if you're an Alabama fan you've got to feel good about what Bill Oliver Mike DuBose and the defensive coaches have done you also got to realize you lost three games by eight points but you lost Saran Stacey you lost Sanderson you lost Wimbley and it's going to take a while. You can't expect something to happen that's not there. You lose your producers. That's what happened. They came after the punt and didn't get it. Short kick. Anderson with his own 40. Flags fly. A blatant clip back at the 40-yard line will be called against Alabama. No question about a clip at the 40-yard line against the Crimson Tide. It's unbelievable that you agree. <laughs> I think we've been very kind to the officials the last few weeks. Somebody has to defend them. <laughs> They've been pounced upon by media outlets and fans and coaches all over the country. Flipping on the return. 15 yards penalty. It's a first down. Well, I want to make sure it's known that you're the, the spokesman for them. Alvin Hope called for the clip. Gene Stallings is going to have good field position out near midfield. Instead, his offense is backed up to its own 26. He's going to the shotgun to give a little more time for Gary Hollingsworth to see what's happening in front of him. Four-man rush. Hollingsworth runs away from it. Fans want a flag, and they get it. Mark D'Onofrio with a late hit. Gene Stallings was right in that line judge's ear again. That appeared to be a good call. D'Onofrio, who admits that he needs to play under control a bit more regularly than he does, guilty of the late hit. Personal foul on the defense. That's a first down. Boy, Penn State coaches now have to be upset with that because they're doing such a good job on defense. Yeah, I don't know. Well, he saw Hollingsworth going to the slide and yep. took the free shot. Didn't turn out to be free. 
Russell was one, uh, running one on one with Perry, but the pass missed him. Second and ten for Alabama at its own 49. Time down to 8.07 left in the fourth quarter, and Penn State leads nine to nothing. You can expect Lamont Russell to be the key target here. Also, maybe Chris Anderson out of the backfield. All day, those have been the two receivers that he's favored. They're the more experienced. Shotgun again on second and ten. Underneath the turner. Short of a first down by about a yard is Kevin Turner. He's into Penn State territory at the 42. Hurry up offense now for the Crimson Tide. Third and one. Turner, first down at the 38-yard line. Doganis made the tackle for the Nittany Lions. Very good job by Alabama right there. They didn't give that, they didn't give Penn State a chance with a hurry-up offense to get into a short yardage defense. Clock starts after they set the chain. Hollingsworth. The fucking pass. Intercepted. Picked off by Frank Gianetti. The senior from Toms River, New Jersey. Picks it off. And Penn State has it back, leading 9 to nothing with 7.22 left. Gary Hollingsworth never saw Frank Gianetti. Watch Gary Hollingsworth set up for the pass. He's looking to the left. Now he brings his head over to throw the ball to the back. He doesn't see Frank Gianetti because he was being blocked and he spun out of the block, tipped the ball, controlled it, made the interception. That's again where Penn State's the toughest when you get him inside that 35 yard line. 40, 35 right in there defensively. First career interception for Gianetti. Leroy Thompson. Across the 45, down at the 46, two yards short of a first down. You can see the other thing happening in this ball game where Leroy Thompson is playing now in full flow. You see a different back than you saw early in the ball game. Now he's back. I mean, he's playing like he's played for the last six weeks. Saw Gianetti on the sideline. He's getting some attention now from pro scouts. He's been timed in the 40 at 4.78 as a 32-inch vertical leap as a defensive tackle. Sam Gash did not get the first down. He did well to get back to the line of scrimmage after he collided with Robert Stewart. Robert Stewart's on the defensive line. Watch him come off the block here. You see again, he's got penetration on Rob Litke, the center for Penn State. Once you get up the football field as a defensive lineman, and what the way Alabama is getting up the field, they're using a slant technique with the nose guard. And he's beating him on the first punch and getting his arm through and getting up into the backfield. Third and two. Thompson bounces off Stewart but didn't get the first down. Stewart hit him first. Sullen finished him off. Ball spotted down at the 45. He's setting up fourth and almost three. Gene Stallings could not have asked for any more for his defense today. Robert Stewart was a fullback. Gene Stallings came in here, looked at him. Mike DuBose, the defensive line coach, they decided to move him to nose guard. And I'm going to tell you something. He's going to be a dominating football player in this conference the remainder of this year and next year. You're looking at a future All-American. Watch him on this particular play here. Again, he's blocked. He comes off. He beats the block of the center. He's done that all day. He's able to get his arm through. And once you get your arm through and you, and you get that step, you get penetration, you've got him beat. And then the key is to wrap up and make the hit in the backfield. Little line getting ready for Halloween. And Stewart asking directions to the sideline. I'll tell you what, when they come back on defense, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Robert was a fullback in 1988. Dame is really a quality opponent and always enjoyed coaching against him and being a part of that game. Heavy rush, great kick. A high kick by Helkowski. Anderson lets it bounce into the end zone. A 
55-yard punt by Doug Helkowski. He knew, as he was standing back there, that the Crimson Tide was coming after him. 9-0 Penn State, and we'll return to Tuscaloosa after goals to the difference. Screen on first down, Houston in trouble, sheds the tackler, and managed to make a sizable gain out of what looked like a four-yard loss. Houston picked up eight on the screen. Watch Jim Dieter on this screen. He's the nose guard. He plays. It seems standing right there. He sees screen all the way. He's going to beat the block of the offensive lineman. He hasn't played. He just can't wrap up and make the tackle on Houston. Jim Dieter was a spy technique on that. He wasn't rushing. He was looking for the screen. Very well coordinated Penn State defense by the coordinator Jerry Sandusky. Hollingsworth couldn't connect with Finkley. Third and two upcoming for Alabama. 5-0-1 remaining in the fourth quarter. 9-0 Penn State. And Alabama has all three of its timeouts remaining. Just 110 yards passing for Alabama today. Hollingsworth is 14 for 32 with three interceptions. Needs the 30, has the 32 and a first down, tripped up by Frank Gianetti. Going to go with a no huddle shot. It's not too late. They just need one drive, and then they're going to, of course, be in an onside kick situation. But they need to throw the ball down the field a little bit more. Penn State is asking for a timeout, and the whistles stop the play before the movement by Chapman, the right tackle. Time is out. Nittany Lions Penn looking State. for their fifth straight win. We'll be right back. With a long way to go for a touchdown, and even that won't be enough to catch Penn State on this possession. First and 10, Crimson Tide at their own 32. Hollingsworth barely completed that one to Turner. Very careless was Hollingsworth with the throw to Turner. He was fortunate to get away with it. Played shortstop. He took that one right off the ground. Sean, you know the field. We've seen so many field goals in the last two weeks. Next year, Colleges are going to go to the pro rule with the goalposts. They're going to be narrow goalposts. But the problem is you still have the hash marks of college football. So the college kicker will be at a big disadvantage next year. Wide hash marks and narrow goalposts. It'll be tough to angle it through. Hollingsworth throws incomplete for Finkley. Then off the linebacker dropped back into coverage. I've been impressed how... Over the last couple of years, the field goal kickers have adjusted to life without the tee. Everybody said that would really cause problems in college football. But the field goal kicking has remained at a high success rate. Well, I think you see more blocks this year because of no tee and uh, people be coming up inside and blocking. But again, when they cut that down and move those goal posts in a little bit, it'll be difficult because you don't have the pro hash marks in college football. Pro hash marks in the middle of the field. Turner. Wrapped up way short of a first down. And the punting unit will come on. Penn State hurried to get a man off the field. They just did. They had 12 men on. Not the 12th man off just before the snap. Forty-five yard punt by Williamson and a six-yard return by Tyson Thomas. I think what the fans wanted there was to, for Gene Stallings to go for it on fourth down. And that's why there was a little bit of a what a difference a week makes sometimes. And perhaps we'll have a different story next week. Nebraska. Thompson ran into George Thornton. Nothing there on first down for Penn State, and Alabama will use its first time out here in the second half. Well, that's what Gene Stallings plans to do now, is that once he punted the football, use his three timeouts to try to get it back right away. You talk about next week, you 
really two solid football coaches in Bill McCartney and Tom Osborne. Two good, solid programs. Bill McCartney went into Colorado and did a nice job. They had a 1-10 season. He turned it around and, and now doing well. Let's go down to the sidelines to Kevin Cadley. Well, I hear you guys talking about next week's matchup. Of course, third most difficult schedule in Division 1A football. They will be tested for certain next week. Sam Gash wants to stay in bounds. Did a good job to do just that. Sam had to actually backpedal to stay in bounds. <laughs> he was headed out of bounds and he stopped himself. And there's a timeout again by Alabama. The 343 left. The Crimson Tide with one timeout remaining, trailing nine to nothing. Gene Stalling says bowl possibilities are the furthest thing from his mind right now. He's concerned with having Alabama continue to improve week to week. But looking at their schedule, they seem to have some games on the horizon they can win. The same can be said for Penn State. They played. Some of the toughest games on their schedule, having played USC, Texas, Syracuse already. When you're a member of a conference, uh, you don't have to really worry about a bow possibility. You have Hootie Ingram as your AD, but you also have Roy Kramer in the SEC, and he'll try to parlay a lot of the SEC teams. Alabama's still alive for a bowl. Penn State, on the other hand, because they're not in the conference, has to do all their dealings, and they don't have the power broker possibility of somebody else because they won't make a deal with anybody else in the East to go here if we win or go here if we lose somebody else. So I think both teams are in the pot. Being a possible. I saw John Fulmer, the Sun Bowl. He's here, and I know he's followed Penn State. And I would look for that bowl to be in a pretty good shape. Joe Paterno at 4-2 coming into today. He'll be 5-2 if the Nittany Lions hang on. His next game at West Virginia. Boy, the Mountaineers have had a disappointing year. Then home for Maryland at Notre Dame and home with Pittsburgh. He'll be favored to win three of those four games. He'll be an underdog at Notre Dame. Tom Bill, short of a first down by six yards, and Alabama burns its last time up. Now you have to go for the kick. You, you've got to block the kick. Special teams come in now. They, they, they have to turn it around. They have to make something happen. So you can expect them to try to rush this kick of Doug Helkowski and try to block it. If this score stands, Alabama would fall to three and four overall and two and three in the southeastern conference but you know we're we're going to go back to cincinnati and play back there a limited number of teams alabama will come after the punt helkowski happy just to get it away a low kick taken in by anderson he squirts out of bounds at the 39 yard line Our Ream players of the game. For Penn State, Darren Perry. Two interceptions today for the senior safety from Chesapeake, Virginia. And for Alabama, John Sullins, the inside linebacker, junior from Oxford, Mississippi. Sean, this is why Gene Stallings punted the last time. He got the ball back, lost a little time on the clock, and lost his timeouts, but he's no worse now in the situation he's in. They, they must go down the football field throwing the football. Hollingsworth blitzed and down. Eric Rabati came off the right end and sacked him back at the 30-yard line. Well, Penn State slid their defensive front over, which allowed Eric Rabati to come free on the backside. You're behind nine to nothing, you have to throw. It's just time to put their ears back on defense, and here they come. Hollingsworth down again. Rabati was there. So this time it was Tyoka Jackson who made the sack. Yeah, there's no threat of any type of run right now. That's why the offensive line of Alabama is having such a tough time. They're just putting their ears back and coming. Those front four. First sack was a loss of 10. That one lost 11. Third and 31. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Lamond Russell. Now, now you what got, do you do? Now you got to go for it on fourth down. You have no choice. The odds certainly slim. Fourth and 31, but with 2.38 remaining, down by nine. He doesn't have any choice, as you point out. Just got to put it up up for grabs and, and hope that he can get some type of tip or some type of big play out of Gary Hollingsworth. They're just going to send all four of these guys just straight down the field streaking. That's what you're going to have right now. 
Takes a little long to get it off, though. That rush will be coming after. Last chance for Alabama. If they don't pick it up, it's over. Hollingsworth fumbles. Recovered by Penn State. Whistles blow the play dead. And the Nittany Lions are going to win their fifth straight game. They take over. At the 20-yard line, Gene Stallings will see his three-game win streak come to an end here today. Again, they, they sent all four wide receivers deep, but the problem on that in this situation is them defensive linemen coming up field, you just don't have time enough to wait for them to get up the field. It's too long a distance to try to complete in that type of situation. Eric Gervati made the tackle. And they ruled Hollingsworth down. It was a good call at the 19. No timeouts for Alabama with two and a half minutes to play. That's a Penn State to run into the boundary here and just kill the clock. That's what they're going to do. Thompson. To the 16 for a pickup of three. The strategy was very simple today for both teams. A defense, field position, look for turnovers. Penn State caused some turnovers. Were able to score their nine points after the turnovers. Played great field position. Both were solid on defense, and that's the way this game was played. A very good defensive struggle. Dash. High stepping. For a first down. He's down to the five-yard line. First and goal. Nittany Lions with a minute 43 left. As soon as this game is over, we'll send you to Pittsburgh. Um, not positive. Man down for Alabama. Of course, today they've improved. They just ran into a good football team. And a lot of people think Gene Stallings did not inherit a very strong football team. Sure, they had a big year last year, went to the Sugar Bowl, but... There's been some question about how well the recruiting has gone here in recent years, and certainly there is a lack of depth caused by the injuries. They need to recruit better if they're going to restore this program to where it was in the past. Well, recruiting's the name of the game, and I think uh, Alabama staff, I've been very impressed with their staff. Uh, the two times we've been up here, they're good recruiters. They'll go out, they'll take 25 good football players to try to get most of them right here in the state of Alabama, and uh, they'll keep building this football program step by step. Long pass incomplete intended for Lee along the far sideline. These are two tradition-rich football teams as we've seen week to week, the tra great tradition in college football. Alabama, of course, Bear Bryant. What a, what a great name in college football. And, Penn State with Rip Ingo, and of course what Joe Paterno has accomplished, the great football players for both schools have played and went on and done so well, not only in pro football, but in all the fields across the, the country as doctors and lawyers and every field. Another long ball, this time intended for Cole incomplete. Joe Paterno told us last night that he enjoys the Alabama rivalry for the reasons we mentioned earlier, for the exposure it gives Penn State in the Southeast, and the opportunity for the Penn State alumni in this area to come see the Lions in person. But he also admires the Alabama fans, thinks they are a classy bunch. He says he gets more mail from Alabama than any other place with the exception of the state of Pennsylvania. One thing as a coach, you get a lot of mail. A lot of these folks have already headed for the exits to go home and pen their letters. <laughs> Some of it you can't read. Finkley the catch. The clock will stop momentarily as they move the chains. It is a first down. Again, as a coach in a team, you have to handle adversity and prosperity. Adversity Alabama handled the first three weeks. Prosperity when things go well. As I said earlier, the football players, when they talk about you got to get over the Tennessee game, they can get over it and the coaches can, but each day they walk to the library, each day they walk to the cafeteria, a student or a fan saying you did a great job and just a little tougher. The pro football, I think they handle a little bit better because week to week, but it's tough in, in college football is getting off that big win. And don't you think that Alabama, because of the injuries, really doesn't have enough offensive weapons to compete against this talented Penn State defense. You couldn't expect this group coming in to score a lot of points. I think Gary Hollingsworth is driving a car with a couple wheels off. And that's 
I mean, in fairness to him, he's had he's got a tough situation here. Gene Stallings knows it. Uh, now Moore knows it. Uh, limited on number of players and limited on the injuries that you receive. Turner has a first down. He refuses to go down and finally does. Giannetti made the tackle. One, one thing, Sean, you know, Saran Stacy would have made a difference in eight points in those first three games. You can account it for, for a couple wins if he would have played in those games, and he'd have been a difference maker today. I'm kind of sad to see this rivalry end. There have been some memorable games. We've showed you a few flashbacks, and this will be it for the decade-long run between these two tradition-rich programs. And Penn State will end it on a winning note, having lost each of the last three seasons to Alabama, Gene Stallings, and his only date head-to-head -head with Penn State. We wind up on the losing end. Well, as I said about three weeks ago, I learned my geography because of the leagues. And this, as I said, the state of Florida kids are all messed up now because Miami's in the Big East. Atlantic Coast has Florida State. Now, if you're a Pennsylvania kid, all of a sudden you got Penn State in the Big Ten. They're all over the place anymore. Second and ten. This will be the final play. It's an interception for Leonard Humphreys. Just go down, Leonard. Leonard wants the end zone. He goes down at the 47. Penn State has won five in a row. The Lions now five and two. Alabama's three-game winning streak comes to an end. The Crimson Tide now three and four. For Mike Gottfried and Kevin Kiley, Sean McDonough saying so long from Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Now back to our studios and Tim Brando. All right, Sean and Mike, thank you very much. In the top 25.